how did you come by this book? Miss Winters told me where to find it. When did she tell you that? Last week when I saw her at the jail. You went to see her? Why? To ask her to spare Barnabas. And she refused? Yes. She pretended to be more concerned about my life than his. I don't understand. She said that if I stayed in Collinwood, I would die. She threatened to kill you? She said that it was written that I would die. And that's when she told me about the book and, and where to find it. And where was that? In her room at the old house. Aunt Natalie and I found it and read it. And did it foretell your own death? Yes. And that of Barnabas? No. For some reason, it was wrong on that point. It, it did not indicate that he would die. What else did the book say? I don't know. It was very long and detailed. But it does set down the future destiny of the Collins family. Well, there is no question about that, Reverend. Is the book written in Miss Winter's hand? No, it's printed. I see. I'm most anxious to see this strange book. Where is it now? It's in my room. I'll get it for you. No, you stay here and rest. I'll get it. Excuse me, Reverend. She has the book. The book, are you sure? Yes. No, 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 don't go in. It, it isn't safe as long as she's there. I'm not afraid of Miss Winters, Countess. On the contrary, she is afraid of me. And she has good reason to be. You may stay out here if you wish. I'm going inside. You may come in now. There's no one here. Aunt Natalie, you must have imagined you saw it. I saw her. She was here. How did she get out? What does it matter how she got out? The important thing is only why was she here? The book. The book. It's gone. Sure, the Countess saw you. I'm positive. It was dark in the room. Perhaps, perhaps she didn't recognize you. Well, no, she knew it was me. Wait a minute. If she was standing at the door, and you didn't go out through one of the windows, how did you go out? I know that house inside out. There's a secret panel in that room. Well, we better do something about the book. Now that they know you have it, it won't be long before they come looking for it. I know. If I take it with me into the cell, they'll probably find it. Could you keep it for me? I'll put it where no one will find it. It may be them. Get back to your cell. I'll lock you in. Mr. Bradford! Mr. Bradford, open this door! Mr. Bradford! What took you so long to open the door, Mr. Bradford? I must have fallen asleep at my desk. It took me a minute to wake up. While you were sleeping, you allowed the witch to escape. 
escape. What are you talking about? Miss Winters was seen less than an hour ago at Collinwood. She came to my room and stole a book. That's impossible. It's not impossible. I was there and saw her. I happen to know that Miss Winters is... that Miss Winters is in her cell and has been there since early this evening when she talked to Mrs. Collins. How do you know? You said you were asleep. I only dozed off for a few minutes. I've been right there at that desk all evening. Besides, the cell is locked. She couldn't have gotten out of this jail without me seeing her. I can see you know nothing about the powers of witchcraft. I don't believe in witchcraft. Perhaps we shall make a believer out of you. I doubt it. I demand to see for myself that Miss Winters is in her cell. Reverend, we don't usually have visitors this late. I do not wish to visit with her. You just want to see if I'm telling the truth, is that it? Are you afraid to let me go back there? Not at all. Go right ahead. Thank you. Won't you sit down, ladies? No, thank you. We prefer to stand. Mrs. Collins, you referred to a book earlier this evening. Is this the same book that's missing now? Yes. Couldn't you just have misplaced it? How many times do you have to be told, young man, that I saw Miss Winters in my niece's room with the book? Oh, well, Reverend. She's in her cell and sleeping. Just like I said. I am not impressed, Mr. Bradford. Reverend, you are going to question her and try to get that book back, aren't you? It would do no good. You may be sure she has it safely hidden away somewhere. But we need it for evidence. It would be very useful, yes. But we no longer need it. What do you mean? Mr. Bradford, would you be willing to testify in court that Miss Winters has been in her cell all evening? Yes, of course. You would say so under oath? Reverend, I don't see what good my testimony would do. I am asking if you would testify under oath that Miss Winters has not left her cell. If I had to, yes. Good. Because we three are prepared to testify that we saw Miss Winters at Collinwood this evening. And I would remind you, sir, that only an act of witchcraft could enable a person to be in two places at the same time. I am confident now, Countess, that there shall be an early trial, a swift conviction, and the punishment shall be death by hanging. Good night, Mr. Brad. Peter, is something wrong? There will be if I don't act quickly. I don't understand. I'm going to find the Reverend Trask and tell him that I let you out of your room last night to go to Collinwood. Why? Because I lied last night. Only I lied too well. But there was nothing else you could have done. The worst thing I could have done was to tell Trask that you didn't leave your cell all evening. Because it only convinced him that you were in two places at once. He's going to tell the court that only a witch could do that. And I'll tell you this, they'll believe him and convict you. Peter, I can't let you go through with this. I'm afraid it's none of your concern. It's my decision. If you tell Trask that you lied last night, you'll be in as much trouble as I am. What will happen to me will be nothing of what will happen to you if you're convicted. Well, they have to convict me first. And they will, if I don't tell Trask that I lied. Peter, please don't go through with this. Why are you so concerned about me? It's your life that's at stake, not mine. Because you're the only person who's shown any kindness and understanding to me. I don't want to see anything happen to you. I assure you, nothing will. 
Well, you, you can be sure of that if you stay here and don't say anything for the time being. Do you really care what happens to me? Yes. Why? Because you're... you're a very special person. Because I'm the only one around to defend you? No. Because you do what you think is right, no matter what anybody else thinks. I've often thought it... It's very sad that, that we live in two worlds that are so far apart in time from each other. But you're a part of this world now. And this time. And I'm glad of it. I wish I knew how long I was going to stay here. You want to return to your own time, don't you? Oh, yes, very much. Is there... Is there someone... No, I, I'd rather not talk about it if you don't mind. Of course not. I only hope you get what you want. Peter, I didn't come here by choice. I, I don't know how it happened. But when I found myself 200 years back in time, I was frightened and miserable. But because of you, I, for the first time, I felt some assurance. I'm very grateful to you for everything you've done. I guess you are from another century. What do you mean? Women here don't do things like that. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean I disapproved. I've been reading this most of the night. It's hard to believe that most of what's written in here hasn't happened yet. Do you believe it will happen? Some of it already has. I know this book must be very hard for you to accept. But... No. What's the matter? What's the date today? 24th, why? In two days, Sarah Collins will have a birthday. What about it? According to this book, she died on her 11th birthday. Are you sure? Yes. On the occasion of her 11th birthday, Sarah Collins, youngest child of Joshua and Naomi, suffering from exposure, contracted the fever and died. Peter, we've got to do something. There's so little time. What can we do? Well, the, the book says that, that she died from exposure. Now, we could prevent that if, if, if she wasn't allowed to go outside for until after her birthday. What can you do about that? You're locked up in here. Well, I, I can't do anything, but Naomi Collins can. Peter, please go to, go to Collinwood and tell Mrs. Collins that I must see her immediately. What are you going to do? I'm going to warn her. What makes you think that she'll believe anything that you say? Please, Peter, go and bring her here. If she's reluctant, then, then tell her that it's a matter of life or death. Yes, you and her aunt went by carriage to Bangor this morning. Oh, do you know when she's coming back? Oh, sometime this evening. It'll be late. You'll be in bed. Oh, then I'll have to leave this in her room before I go to bed. Leave what in her room? This. What is it? You see, jo Joshua, Josette's been so sad for such a long time. I thought maybe she'd like to be happy again. So I made her a present. Well, that was very thoughtful of you, Sarah. What kind of present? Open it and see. Oh, it's a candle. Rick showed me how to make it. 
And he told me why Josette would like it. Why? Well, he said that when someone you love has gone away, if you put a candle in your window, they'll come home. And I know Josette wants Barnabas to come home because I think she still loves him. Yes, I think so, too. I miss Barnabas a lot. Sarah. Mother, oh. I love Barnabas, and I want him to come home. Barnabas is going to be away in England for a long time, Sarah. How long? Well, perhaps as long as till after you're grown up. I don't think Barnabas wants to stay away from us that long. I'll wait until it's dark, and I'll light the candle and put it in Josette's window. And somehow Barnabas will know it's there, and he'll come back to us. You'll see. I've got to talk to you. Did anyone see you come out here? Of course not. I'm always real careful when I come down here. 